Hi there, I'm Farida. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back to the Dental Radiology. Today, we're going to talk about three common pathologic lesions that can affect the maxillary sinus and how to differentiate them in a radiograph. So, stay tuned to the end of this video. There are many different lesions that can affect the maxillary sinus. A normal sinus or a healthy sinus is seen clear or radiolucent in the radiograph. It means there is only air inside the sinus. The normal sinus membrane is only one millimeter thick and not seen in the radiograph images. But when inflammation starts, it can increase about 10 to 15 times and it's called the mucosal thickening and now it is seen inside the radiograph and it appears to be a radiopaque strip in a parallel with the sinus wall. If the mucosal thickening is localized we call it mucositis but if it's generalized it's mostly caused by sinusitis or the sinus infection. Even a posterior maxillary tooth that is infected can start a mucosal thickening that is localized, or we said it, we call it the mucositis, right in the floor of the maxillary sinus. If the to tooth is treated, the mucosal thickening starts to go away. Mucus retention cyst, also known as retention pseudocyst, occurs when there is mucus accumulation due to the abstraction of the mucus gland duct that is inside the membrane of the sinus. So why do we call it a pseudocyst? Because there is no epithelium lining. That is something we talk about in pathology and we have to see it underneath the microscope. The mucus retention cyst inside the maxillary sinus can be seen inside a panoramic radiograph. It can be unilateral or bilateral or even multiple. So what we see in the radiograph, it's a slight radiopaque dome-shaped lesion with no cortical borders. Keep that in mind. And it doesn't affect the adjacent anatomical structures. It's radiopaque because it's full of mucus. It needs no treatment if the ostome is not blocked. Mostly it resolves, so it's like a balloon that's getting bigger and maybe it'll pop. So maybe I won't see it in the next radiograph. Benign odontogenic cyst and neoplasm. So as the name represents, these lesions happen or start inside the jaw. Particularly radicular cysts or dentigerous cysts that are common extrinsic lesions that can affect the maxillary sinus. When these lesions continue to grow, it reaches the floor of the maxillary sinus. As it continues to enlarge, it displaces the floor of the maxillary sinus superiorly. The border of the cyst and sinus are now the same line of bone. As it continues to enlarge, the lesion fills almost all the space of the sinus, leaving a small saddle-like sinus appearance. Benign cysts and neoplasm have round shape. This thin radiopaque line is in contrast to a mucus retention cyst. In a mucus retention cyst, no saddle appearance and no radiopaque thin cortex. In addition, a cyst or benign odontogenic neoplasm can cause displacement of teeth and sometimes we can have external root resorption. But in mucus retention cyst, there is no effect on the adjacent anatomical structures. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. If it was helpful, please feel free to share it and press that bell button for getting notifications for my next videos. Keep smiling and have an awesome day.